Do you want to start a food business from the comfort of your home? Well, make sure you guys keep watching because in this video, we're going to cover the top 10 food ideas that you can start from the comfort of your own home. Hello friends, my name is Wilson, your friend in helping you start a profitable food business and a thriving small business. Do you want to start your own home food business? Let me know in the comment section below. Now as a disclaimer, I see a lot of people start their food business from home and then once they get it validated, then they go through approved kitchens. Now I'm not recommending or encouraging this, I'm just sharing with you what is working outside. Something you should definitely check out, it's something called cottage food laws. Now once again, as a disclaimer, I'm not encouraging this, so proceed at your own risk. Now let's dive right in. First small food business idea that you can start from your own home is ice cream. Now, as a lot of you guys already know, I started my own ice cream shop, grew that to a seven location chain. Definitely, if you haven't checked out that video, make sure you guys check it out. That's the full story. And that's why I'm super, super encouraging to other people to start their ice cream business. Now, the pros of selling ice cream is because now you can batch create these items that allows you to free up your time. So at one point in time, you can create 40 different batches of ice cream and then shove them in the freezer. And then when people are ordering, you can either deliver it or pick up versus a on-demand food business that you have to be on site and create it and deliver it right at that moment. Another pro of creating ice cream at home is that you can actually limit the amount of volume you're creating, mainly because of production, but also it's a very high marketing tactic. What do I mean by that? Creating limited addition allows your customers to have even more desire to buy from you. So every time you create a new flavor, they're gonna be ready to gobble that up. In addition to that, once you've figured out your recipe, it's quite simple for you to replicate that recipe and add in different ingredients. And on top of that, the margins are relatively healthy, running at around 40% margin. So so typically speaking, people can retail pints of ice cream from a $10 to up to $15. Having said that, people usually don't buy just one tub of ice cream. They usually buy two or three or even four tubs of ice cream, running your tap to $40 to even $80. Now the cons of selling ice cream is the high competition because people have so many choices when it comes to desserts. Aside from ice cream, they could be eating many different types of uh, dessert as well. And on top of that, when you're competing specifically with an ice cream, you're competing against big brand names like Ben's and Jerry's or Haagen-Dazs or Dryers. These are really big brands that you're competing against. Which means for you to stand out and create a successful brand, you must be able to differentiate, be able to understand who you're targeting and then really double down into doing that. Which means you're gonna spend a lot of time doing research and development. The second small food business idea you can do from home are cookies. Cookies are super beloved and it has a mass appeal to all age groups, from my daughter to myself, to my dad, we all love to indulge in a good gooey cookie. And that's the reason why it hits that list. The pros of running a cookie business is that it is very easy for you to enter. And on top of that, you can actually have a lot of creative ways to make a good cookie, whether it's vegan cookies or super delicate cookies. It is all up to you to create. So the sky's the limit when it comes to creating cookies. And on top of that, you can actually batch create many different cookies and you can shove it into your freezer when you are done. So it makes production a little bit easier as well. And once again, it is a batch created item versus an on-demand item. That means it helps with your production cycle. Now, finally, selling cookies have good margins as well, anywhere from 30 to 40%. That gives you plenty of healthy margins to play around with. Now the cons of selling cookies is that it is highly competitive. I can go to my local Walmart and there would be dozens of cookie brands out there for me to choose from. Therefore, for you to stand out and for you to make this successful, you must be able to differentiate your item that it's not anywhere to be found. And second of all, Labor can be intensive as well, depending on how big your home is and depending on how many ovens you have at home. And that's the reason why these are items that you're only gonna be using and making in small batches. Also, another con is that the price per cookie is quite low. You can at most sell a cookie for $2 to $3. What does that mean? That means to combat that low ticket value item, an issue, we must bundle it together, sell six cookies at a time or 12 cookies at a time. So that way we can increase your average order value. 
Third item you can create from home are sauces. Now, a lot of sauces comes from mom's recipe, and which is the reason why I highly recommend you, if you have a really, really good sauce, don't ever give up on that, especially with what's going on right now. You can actually package that, sell to your friends and family, and who knows, one day it could become an overnight sensation. Now, the pros of selling sauces is that it can be super versatile, and on top of that, when you create and produce these sauces, it does come in batches. What does that mean? It helps helps you manage your production costs very, very much. Now the cons of selling sauces is that it is very, very competitive. Just imagine going down the aisle of sauces in Walmart. The dozens and dozens of sauces that are available. Therefore, for you to stand out, you must be able to differentiate yourself. What are you doing that is differently from everyone else? So some success that I've seen are people combining truffle sauce with hot sauce and that has become a huge hit or combining coffee beans with hot sauce very very unique combos that works and that has market traction so definitely for you to stand out you must be able to differentiate the fourth small food business that you can create from the comfort of your own home are dumplings now dumplings is a very cultural staple food item that is very very popular therefore if you have the ability to create some really good dumplings it is definitely going to be a hit the pros of selling dumplings is the fact that it is very very easy to make you basically don't need much equipment whatsoever and on top of that people eat this as a staple item that means consumption is all the time people can eat dumplings all the time and that's the reason why this is such a highly sought out item for a lot of people Another pro of selling dumplings is that you can sell these in batches. So a lot of people say sell them in bags of 20 to 40 dumplings at once, ranging from $20 to $30. Cons of selling dumplings is that the market is definitely a little bit tighter because it is a cultural staple food item. That means people might not understand what dumplings are or appreciate dumpling for what it is. And on top of that, the creation process of dumplings is definitely very, very tedious. It is usually hand enrolled by people and that's the reason why for you to create a business out of selling dumplings it is very very labor intensive and a lot of times it is going to be very very tough on yourself as well now speaking of dumplings if you want to know how this person that i interviewed sells more than eighty thousand dollars worth of dumplings every single month and how they made it so successful definitely check out that video right here an interview that we did with dumpling drops check it out if you guys enjoyed this video and find value in this video, make sure you guys smash the like button and let me know this is the type of content that you enjoy. Now, back to regular programming. Another food idea that you can create from your own home are pizzas. A lot of people are actually selling pizza from their own home because it is just a staple item that everyone can eat every single day, myself included. I just ate pizza yesterday and for lunch today, so there you go. The pros of selling pizza is that it is super versatile. That means you only need an oven in order for you to start this business up. And on top of that, the demand is through the roof. As long as you make some really good pizza, people will be willing to buy from you. On top of that, selling pizza, you are gonna be having a lot of high volume. Profit margin wise, you're gonna be looking at around 20 to 30%. And that's the reason why so many pizza places are around your block. Now, when it comes to selling pizza, there are two models that you can mirror off, either selling it as frozen pizzas or on demand pizzas as well. Both models works, but then choose one that fits your needs. Cons of selling pizza at home is definitely, once again, it's the competition because I can easily call up Domino's or Pizza Hut and pizza would be to my door within 30 minutes. So how can you compete with these big brands? It is very, very difficult unless you have something that is different, unless the quality that you're providing is unmatched. That's the reason why you must be able to locate and fine tune what sets you apart from your competitors. And on top of that, the cons of selling a pizza is that you are gonna face a limitation in your production. Just imagine how many pizzas can you make in your home oven. If your volume does pick up, are you gonna be able to sell 50 pizzas out of your own home oven? It is gonna be very, very difficult as you scale up. But to start off, selling pizzas at home to test out and validate your idea is a very great way to get your feet wet. The number six small food idea that you can start from the comfort of your own home are cakes. Why? 
because for every occasion that you want to celebrate, you always buy a cake. And that's the reason why it is a very, very high demand product, selling cakes. The pros of selling cakes is that the margins can be very, very high when and if you position yourselves accordingly. You could sell a cake as much as two to three hundred dollars, a custom cake. However, it really comes back down to how you position yourself. Now the cons of selling cakes is that it is very, very highly competitive. That means once again, I can go to any types of markets to get a cake on the go. So that means for you to be able to make a name for yourself, you must be able to differentiate. Now with cakes, it's a lot easier for you to differentiate because there are just so many different variety of cakes that you can create. Whether it's a cheesecake, pound cake, cake pops, sponge cake, crepe cake, or any other cakes that are out there. You can actually choose one of these verticals and dive very, very deeply into these verticals to be able to differentiate yourself from the marketplace. Another con is that cake is not a walk in the park. It requires a lot of research and development trial and error. Therefore, you must try and try and try. It is a science when it comes down to it. And any type of small variable would change the outcome of your cake. That means you must have the patience and you must be skillful. Now, you might be thinking, if I'm not skillful, what can I do? Well, you can be like Big Willy Sticks. Check out this guy. He created a whole new business just by hiring consultants from Craigslist to come up with his formulation. So for you, you can do the same as well if that's the route that you want to take. The seventh small food idea that you can have and create at the comfort of your own home are meal preps. Now, when it comes to meal preps, there are two different kinds of meal preps. First, there are the meal preps that are created, all cooked up and then thrown into the fridge for you. The second type of meal preps are the ones that come in a box of ingredients that hasn't been cooked yet and delivered to your customers for them to cook. So those are the two big differentiators. Now, for the sake of this specific video, we're gonna dive specifically into the ones that are pre-cooked because the ones that are selling ingredients like HelloFresh, Blue Apron, they are super, super competitive. And I, quite frankly, I just don't see that model being able to be executed by you at home. Now, the pros of selling these meal kits at home is that usually the average order ticket price is quite high because typically speaking, I would be preparing several different meals for my clients, whether it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, preparing it for three days, five days, or seven days, that's selling 15 meals, 20 meals to 30 meals by every transaction. That means you only need a few different clients in order for you to be highly profitable. If you do a good job and if you do cook some great food, then they're gonna order from you the following week and the following week, which allows you to create something like a subscription service. Now with a subscription service, that allows you to predictably manifest and actually budget for the revenue that you are to create in the weeks to come. Definitely making this much more of a solid business idea. The cons of this is that meal preps are still very highly competitive. That means that they have a lot of choices when it comes to food. Why are they buying food from you for seven days a week, eating the same stuff that is prepackaged? It is because they are either very, very busy or they're looking for a very specific reason to buy from you. Whether they're a fitness junkie that's looking for very specific nu nutrients that they wanna put into their body or whether they have dietary restrictions so then that way they can either only eat gluten-free or vegan, you must choose one of these niches to double down in so then that way it makes it easier for them to purchase from you. The next food idea that you can start at the comfort of your own home are chocolates. Now chocolate is one of my favorite desserts out there. And on top of that, the demand of chocolate is definitely skyrocketing like crazy. By 2025, the estimated consumption of chocolate goes up to $182 billion worth of chocolate. So that's why it is a huge demand of a product for you to jump into. Now, the pros of creating chocolate is that it is very versatile. That means that are, there are a lot of different varieties that you can choose from, whether it's dark chocolate, white chocolate, keto chocolate, vegan chocolate, or caramel chocolate. There are just so many different flavors that you can really hone in your skill in creating some very specialized chocolate. And on top of that, depending on the season, depending on the events and the holidays, you can actually also jump into creating trendy chocolates for your customers. 
Another pro is that chocolate tends to have a much higher shelf life. That means once you batch create a limited batch of chocolate, you can actually put them on the shelf and you don't need to go back into the kitchen to create the item to sell whenever people place an order. On top of that, creating chocolate doesn't require you to have some fancy different types of equipment. Simply a mixing bowl, some baking sheets, thermometer, and you are good to go. And typically speaking, selling chocolates does have a very healthy margins when choosing the right ingredients, ranging from 20 to 40% margins when it comes down to it. And on top of that, creating these items allows you to batch create your chocolate. That means you don't always need to be by the kitchen, and that means that allows you to have more time focusing on marketing and all the other aspects of this business. However, in this trade and for you to be truly successful as a chocolatier and to create a business selling chocolate, you must actually have some very specialized skill set because I can easily go down to any grocery market or corner store and find a bunch of chocolate. So for you to actually be successful selling chocolate, you must really focus on a specific narrow niche and create a brand name for yourself. The next food idea that you can start from your home are monthly subscription boxes. Now, what are these subscription boxes? It is something that is fun, sent to your customers on a monthly basis that they can consume. Yes, it is a little bit more in the left field. However, with what's going on right now, it is a very popular and highly in demand type of service. Now, selling these subscription boxes are very versatile. That allows you to have your creative juices flowing from all areas of your life. What do I mean by that? Well, you can be selling sushi boxes, taco boxes, cake boxes, snack boxes, bubble tea box, sourdough box, wine box, tea box, and you can actually see all kinds of boxes currently on createjoy.com. Check it out right here to inspire you to create your next subscription box. And the biggest pros for you to sell subscription box is because now you have a recurring revenue that you can count on. This is much more of a better business than if you were to sell on-demand food products like pizza on the go. It's because subscription boxes, people usually sign up for a month, two months, three months at a time. Now the cons of creating these subscription box is that first of all, you need to educate your consumers on these boxes of what is in it and the value that is created. And oftentimes it is a difficult process to turn them into a customer. And on top of that, the production of these costs, uh, these boxes are actually quite substantial when it comes down to it. When we first created our bubble tea box called Bulbasaur, we never anticipated that it would take us that long, three to four hour stretches of time just to create 10, 20 different boxes. And that's the reason why that is something also you need to account into your cost of production. Now, as I was saying, this item is definitely growing in demand. That means competition is higher as well. That means more options to choose from. That means churn is higher. What does churn mean? That means the amount of people leaving your subscription. Now, how do you combat churn? You must have different creative ways to incentivize your customers to continue purchasing from you. As an example, Tokyo Treats has different streak levels that incentivizes and rewards consumers to subscribe on a monthly basis. And as they reach three months, five months, six months, they get different points and in exchange of different treats as well that incentivize them to go a month longer, another month longer as a customer. Final idea are soups. Soups are a great addition to anyone's household, whether the people are sick, whether they just want something comforting or just a light snack. Soup is a great way for someone to actually put some good food at their home. The pros of creating soup as a food item that you can sell is that now you can batch create and produce this item. When we're talking about soup, we can either sell it in dry ingredients, in packages which we can send to our customers, or we can sell them pre-packaged and pre-made soup as well. And for this specific example, I highly recommend you selling soups as a finished product, whether it's frozen or as a container of soup. The pros of that is that now you can batch create a lot of these soups and put them either in the fridge or in your freezer. So when people are wanting and ordering from you, then you can actually take them back out and send it to your customers. Another pro of creating soups is that the recipes to create soups are oftentimes 
relatively more simple than cooking regular food because all the time you put all the, your ingredients into the pot and it's pretty much good to go. Now the cons of selling soup is that it is much more difficult to succeed. Why is that the case? It is because there isn't enough demands for soup. In comparison to all the different items that I shared with you earlier on the list, soup is definitely at the bottom of the list. Therefore, you must be really good or there must be a certain reason of why people are buying from you in order for you to be a popular brand. On top of that, the margins in soups are definitely a lot lower than all the other items because, for example, a can of Campbell's soup, they sell for a dollar each. So it's hard to compete with that if you don't have enough ingredients or if you're not differentiating yourself out there. So there you go friends, the top 10 small food business ideas that you can start at the comfort of your own home and at the end of the day, having an idea is oftentimes the most difficult part. Now that you have an idea, have an inspiration of what to start, the next step is to actually go and create it and create the business side of things, validate it, create your menu, price it accordingly, do the logistics and then start to sell it on the internet or create your own physical location. And if that's the route you wanna take, then definitely check out the free masterclass that we're conducting in the link below where I share with you all these knowledge of how you can get started. It is completely free. Go into the link, sign up. I will see you guys in the next video and make sure you guys subscribe along the journey so then that way I can share more love, support and strategies with you guys.